this experience is such a like like I it's kind of a weird thing to call it but like a complicated onion there's so many layers to it like it's not only that it's a very unique experience if you were to pay for an experience where someone says I'm going to take you around the world just show up at a place you don't know exactly where you're going to go and you're going to have a crazy experience where you have to demonstrate all your skills in an environment you've never been in just based on your knowledge and your ability to adapt and self soothe yourself <laughs> through different events and, and leave your whole life behind. Um, so there's that, but then there's also the experience of like, um, you're going to be starving. You're going to, you're going to go further and further into decline. Um, I don't know. Well, yeah, a couple of guys in the later seasons have done really well in terms of gain, um, gaining big gain, but most people have like, you start depleting your body resources and the weather always gets worse. That's how they time the seasons. Um, but then you have to film everything and you're by yourself and you have to do multiple camera shots all the time in the daylight. And even some at night, you have to record everything. So, you know, and then you have to come home and, um, and you don't get to see how it's edited. And I, you know, they were pretty truthful with the editing, but you're watching it when everyone else is watching. Like when they showed me shaving my legs, I was like, <laughs> man, like they had 800 hours of footage of me and they showed me for an hour. And, um, you know, you just forget about some of it. Like I had forgot, like that was like months. That was six. It was about three months after that they showed it. And, and they you spent know, a long time showing you shaving your legs with that knife you had there. I know, with that Bowie knife. Yeah. Yeah. I just, but I just, you're like, oh, I forgot I did that because I did like 200 other traps on land. And, but no one, you know, and people always say, we want to focus on the skills. But in all honesty, they want to see like the other parts too. Like no one wants to just see a strictly bushcraft show. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's a really, it's a very complicated, uh, something that I is really deep within my psyche, like, and I know it is for the other contestants that have gone a long time. It's just, and it is life changing. Like it did change parts of me when I came back uh, to my regular life in terms of how in the context of, you know, be, me being a contestant with other contestants in a very similar situation around a lake, and you start to view yourself in the context of, oh, that's weird. I approached it that way. But Callie, who was right beside me down the lake, approached it differently. So you start to even question how you approach things in life and if there's different angles of approaching things. And I think you start to question just your priorities in life and where you want to spend your time and what is important in your life. Like for me, it's about my relationships, my family, and just really spending my time on things that I want to spend my time on. And, um, and that I know deep down that no matter what happens, if I'm going to make a decision, we all are bound by monetary restraints and, you know, getting a shelter over us for our family and getting food and dealing with stresses of life. But I just know after going through something like that, like, <laughs> like nothing can be as hard as doing something like that. We are dropped into a situation and you need to just come up with a plan and make it work. And I've gone through that. So I know that no matter what happens, I have a bit of that confidence that I can make things work that, yeah, it might be hard and stressful, but I'll get through it. Yeah. And, and obviously you, you would have had um, some physical ramifications, right. From, from the show that I'm sure have, have yeah. lasted and persisted for a long time. Um, did you have any like emotional challenges I guess when you came back was it was it a struggle for you to kind of reintegrate back into society and and family life I mean I can imagine you know being out for that long and and in such a primal state that then yeah. coming home and especially coming home to you know the the rat race that is young children and all of that um what was that like yeah, it was because you actually do use different parts, you know, the cortex, like when you're in a survival state, it's a different type of like how your brain operates, even it's more of a primitive way of thinking. And then just trying to get back into the regular routine of, you know, just that sort of structure that's outside of that primitive way. Um, yeah, it did take some time. And luckily, I do have support around me, like including my family and husband and my kids were great. Um but it, it did take a while to integrate. And I know many of the other contestants from our season three, it took like a good year, like even a couple of years to kind of wrap your head around going through such a big thing, um, such a really unique experience and being on TV, all of it. And none of us had 
preparation for like how people were going to troll us on social media. And the interesting thing about the alone contestants, just talking to the psychologist who was involved with our group after is because she was involved at the front end too, is they do tests and the majority of the people that had been on alone up to that season. And I would say on, on the seasons after that are introverts, like heavily introverted. I'd say I'm a sort of an, you know, an ambivert, but kind of skew towards introverts. And then all of a sudden you're just filming everything about your life in this little world of your own, where you're out there in the middle of the woods, where it's like very introverted. <laughs> and then it's blasted around the world for everyone to critique. And it's edited to just show a small portion of what you've done out there or your fumbles or the drama or me crying. And, you know, so all of a sudden you're into that world of social media. So it was a really big learning experience about how to handle that too, because we had no, there was no guidelines, um, and there was a lot of troll. Like I had someone that thought I was getting my hair colored out there because I was 41 <laughs> and I didn't have gray hair. <laughs> I thought, man, if I like, that's the least of the things that I'd want brought to me. I'd want hamburgers brought to me, not some hair color. <laughs> so just weird things, you know, and it just makes you realize like, like in all honesty, what a bit of a um, mass social media is and how it's really influenced society. There's good things about social media, but it just really makes you realize like there is and I've been very cognizant with my teenagers uh just around social media use because there is a lot of um unfettered negative stuff happening on social media as well yeah I I can't